Warning, this is a series dedicated to the works of Jess Franco, and given the nature of his films, there will be mild nudity on occasions. I will blank out the more explicit stuff, but as this series is intended for adults and is age-restricted in accordance with that intent, it seems a little redundant to pixelate every shot of a naked boob or bottom. If you choose to continue, then great. If you're likely to be offended by mild nudity, then please find another video to watch. Thanks. Welcome to Francophile, a curiously populated place where there's one rule. Boobs out. This episode, we head yet again into Jess's old obsession with the slammer as a woman is incarcerated in the hellhole of a prison for the crime of fighting back. Naked guards, naked prisoners and an abusive warden are all familiar ingredients in Jess Franco's barbed wire dolls. Maria de Guerra finds herself transported to the clink for the murder of her father. There she finds a regime run by a warden, a cruel woman who thinks nothing of torture to sate her perverse sexual tastes. Between ruling with an iron fist and taking advantage of the prison's facilities, the warden and her staff have to contend with leaks of what's going on there and insubordination amongst the inmates. As the story unfolds, the truth of her interest in Maria becomes clear and the only option for them is to escape. You poor child. I can see that you're not well. Is it serious? No, don't worry, my dear. I have just the medicine for you. Ah! Ah! No! I want to leave you here. Help me, dear God. Ah, 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 don't let me die. Ah. What's the matter with you? Ah. Be quiet! Help, mother. Control yourself. Oh. 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 Quick, Rosa. Let's take a nice walk out by the sea. Oh, come on, quickly. We're in danger here. Yes. I don't want to die. I'll take care of the guard. Barbed Wire Dolls, yet another women in prison film from Jess Franco, is a bit of an insight into where his films were heading. Concerned in equal parts with oogling the ladies of the film and a story about a wrongly imprisoned woman, and of course a warden with a grudge against her. It's half a serving of decent and half a serving of indecent really. Opening to a scene of psychological torture, we find a starving inmate being teased with food by a, a meat-headed stooge who could very well cause the outbreak of some 70s porno music. It doesn't quite set the scene so well with the dubbing. It, it, that just doesn't quite work. Swinging from the sublime to the ridiculous, the story is slim at best. Though when it does rear its head in between the lingering sex scenes, complete of course with Franco's trademark attention to the women's naked bodies, particularly their crotches, 
When it does surface, the story is just about interesting enough to carry the film beyond the voyeurism. But even then, it's rather rudimentary. Focusing intently on the warden, we find a new prisoner being delivered into a custody. But this one is special. Maria, played by the gorgeous Lena Romay, is part of the warden's history. Having killed her father accidentally while defending herself against his advances, the warden, it seems, has a score to settle. Maria's father, it turns out, was the warden's lover, and has requested Maria serves a sentence under her, where she can exact a revenge. I convince the authorities to allow you to come here. This is a prison of correction. In this institution, we use methods which will restore you to mental health. Don't imagine it'll be easy here for you, however. We will not be indulgent. You will be shut up in a special cell where we will persuade you to cooperate with us. Guard, take her away. As you command. First, you must sign this paper to permit us to treat you with shock therapy. The story is fairly promising, but spends so much time bouncing around and padding the runtime with kinky sadomasochistic sex shenanigans that it all becomes more hazy than the camera work which Franco apparently handled himself. More on that in a bit. The result is a rather meandering story that spends a lot of time not really setting up much more than the next round of sex acts and the eventual escape action, which culminates in a surprisingly sudden halt to the proceedings. The motivations for the warden are really a point of confusion. She excuses her actions as being rehabilitation for the worst kind of scum, though her main drive seems to be malice and spitefulness. Surrounding herself with like-minded people, or at least those that she can manipulate easily, she casually doles out electrocution as a form of punishment. Or amusement. And she makes the prisoners sign off on it. Yep. In Remay's first scene, she rather casually is asked to sign a waiver that gives permission for her captors to send voltage through her body. And she doesn't even hesitate. Things like this rather point towards the story as being very much a vehicle, a convenient way to get from A to C. A being partially dressed women lounging around in such a manner as to give an angle for a close-up of the Holy Land, B being the lesbian frolicking, and C being the kinky torture. Jess Franco can be a bit strange, and single-minded sometimes, and this is him apparently wanting to lean towards the more prurient, whilst also making that prurience at least seem a little bit rewarding otherwise. It's all a bit of nonsense that really doesn't delve too deep into seriousness, despite the horrific nature of what's going on. Frankly, the film staggers between drama and comedy, seeming intentionally funny on occasions, Aside from the warden coming off as something of a female version of Hair Flick, we find some very odd moments like Remy's dream flashback to her crime. And God, it is comedy gold. No! Cut it out! What's the matter with you, huh? Nothing. I want to show you my affection. Obey me. I won't hurt you.
Unfortunately, I'm not at all certain that it's actually intended to be. Ah, oh, Jess, you were such a ham. As I mentioned earlier, this film is one of those times when Franco actually operated the camera in order to save money, and frankly, it's all over the place. While there is a lot of nice work in regards to directorial decisions about the cinematography, it's very clear that Franco was a little less amazing at actually making the camera work. Blurry shots, shaky handheld shots, and so on litter the film to the point that some, including Franco himself, claimed he predated the Dogma 95 movement. While that may have been the case, I'm not so sure it was exactly intentional, though Franco would have sworn blind that it was all about the realism. Despite these concerns, concerns that were actually shared by the distributor at the time, the film did well, and it's easy to see why Franco made so many films in this vein. They were cheap and surprisingly popular. Franco's regular contributors uh, in front and behind of the camera were there, the locations were easily accessible, and a minimum of actual sets were needed to be built. It's not a complicated script and not exactly a demanding scenario to film, so everything was likely to be quick, cheap and easy to do. The Franco may have benefited from saving a bit of the budget for a cinematographer. Barbed Wire Dolls is a bit of ridiculous fun though, there is a smattering of a political message regarding the officials and their relationship with the warden, though it's kind of lightly touched on, which is a shame really, considering Franco seems to have felt it was important enough to focus on on occasions during the story. But it's there, just about. The allusions to the Nazis, the language the authorities use, the corruption and manipulation. It's there, but it's buried in the admittedly enjoyable smut. It does bear all the hallmarks of Franco's middle ground projects with great looking locations, the gratuitous sex, the disarred inspired kinks and things like the inexplicably topless naked female guards. Unfortunately, despite the film's obvious flaws, it does feel like everyone involved was having a good time making it. While I've seen some people say this is one of his better films, I can't fully agree. It's a halfway house between his good and bad stuff really. Silly enough to be enjoyable and occasionally interesting enough in its more serious moments, but overall there are too many things that are leaning towards the less successful and creative end of Franco's work to allow it to be classed as one of his good works. It runs more overtly as a voyeuristic work in many regards and as such its mandate is a lot narrower than something like Venus in Furs or She Killed in Ecstasy. That said, it's a far more accomplished film than something like Devil Hunter, which was in most respects an abortion of a film by comparison. Franco did at least seem fairly interested in this project, and the warden is a fairly interesting character, as is the Doctor, and of course the motivations for why she does what she does. All that is just secondary, though, to the more exploitative component of the film, to really hit home. But it has to be said, the film is just about right in runtime and is entertaining enough to be a breeze to sit through, even if it is a little too frivolous for its own good.